pay. So, <coughs> I'm going to cover some topics that can be heavy if we let them, but let's not get into the whole political, social, cultural business. I am a selfish, middle-class, white, cis male who lives in a rural area, so I'm not on the best end of things identity-wise. We aren't even going to get into the ideological area of things. This is just a video essay or biography. It all starts with a brilliant, though still controversial, British naturalist from 19th century Britain. Yeah, yeah, you've probably heard of him. But basically, he did a bunch of boating, and he decided that variation allows certain differences to outlast others based on how they hit it off with the environment. Anyway, his cousin didn't really like school. I go to school. I like that. But he did like deciding who should hit it off with whom. His interests picked up the names Social Darwinism and Eugenics. E.L. James probably would have gotten along with this promiscuous duo, but she wasn't alive. Instead, an email failure of an art student decided that he was the prodigal son of Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan, not to mention the next Shakespeare. Even so, it is not necessary to associate contemporary ideas on evolution with all these weirdos. Okay. So, <clears throat> it is time for the man of the hour. If you're going to take anything away from this, just remember, E.O. Wilson is more than just the ant guy. As seen in his, this decidedly unreliable source, really gets their hard when they see this ramp. Wilson had many major works, sociobiology, on human nature, the ants, but we will look at the more popular anthill and also Consilience. Another popular book he wrote is The Diversity of Life. Wilson is best known as a myrmecologist. The study in ants, which he covers most extensively in his nonfiction work, The Ants. However, Wilson's novel Ant Hill is more popular. It is about a modern day Huckleberry Finn whose improbable love of the strange, beautiful, and elegant world of ants ends up transforming his own life and the citizens of Nakobe County. While this work is no literary masterpiece or narratological revolution, its approach to the subject does capture something of that Walt Whitman poem in Breaking Bad. When I heard the lyrics, when the proofs. The figures were ranged in columns before me when I was shown the charts and the diagrams to add, divide, and measure them. When I, sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured, with much applause in the lecture room. How soon, uncomfortable, I became tired and sick. Till rising and gliding out, I wandered off by myself in the mystical, moist night air. And from time to time, looked up in perfect silence at the stars. Sociobiology is Wilson's second installment in his nonfiction trilogy, in which he tries to clear up some of the controversy of the first book titled Insect Societies. In sociobiology, Wilson uses his evolutionary stance to cover many ideas relating to the big interdisciplinary question of to what extent people control their own lives. On Human Nature is Wilson's third installment in his nonfiction trilogy. After resolving the controversy of the first book and the second book, Wilson decides to expand his ideas in the third. In On Human Nature, Wilson argues that evolution has left its traces on humanity with such characteristics as generosity, self-sacrifice, worship, sexual pleasure, and homosexual love. UW professor emeritus David P. Barish called On Human Nature, a wide-ranging, thoughtful, and controversial classic of human sociobiology. In, in 
Consilience, Olson discusses methods that have been used to unite the sciences and might in the future unite them with the humanities. He discusses the ideas of people like Bacon, Descartes, and Newton, but also discusses general subjects like statistical mechanics, neurobiology, and quantum chemistry. In the diversity of life, Wilson says that nature can restore destruction of biodiversity, from a tree falling in a forest to mass extinction. The problem is that damage done in a few human lifetimes can take millions of human lifetimes to restore. Wilson goes on to discuss how science can at most offer generally accepted, constantly changing concepts. He describes how Earth became diverse and the danger of destroying this diversity. Despite the controversial origins of the topics Wilson covers in his many works, they all are insightful and cover a wide scope of information. To quote Wilson, the real problem of humanity is the following. We have Paleolithic emotions, medieval institutions, and godlike technology. 